So just to inform you about uh, Ramses the third, so uh, she would love to be in the shade. So she can be in the shade. Yeah. So where was that sea battle fought? Uh, we will. We will. Uh, I will show you all of the scenes. No, I mean where was it fought? In the Red Sea or the Mediterranean? No, Mediterranean. Like one of the strongest heroes. That's why he's already. I we said he's not son of Ramses the second, but he called himself as Ramses the third, you know, or call himself Ramses to say I'm the from the generations of Ramses the greatest or Ramses the second. Okay. Uh, by the way, some Egyptologists call him unlucky pharaoh. Why? First thing for his tomb. When they decide to make his tomb at the beginning, they find out they hit another tomb. That's why they stop moving to another place. Keep going. Quality of the stone has been not very good. Finally, third time it works. Uh, but anyway, they was also gonna hit another tomb. They start tearing a bit. But anyway, as for uh, Ramses the third about his tomb. But he's unlucky for another thing. For sure, Pharaohs they have a multiple wife, and sometimes. Uh, I think it's not fun to have more, one is more than enough. <laughs> one is enough. But again, Pharaoh, they have a multiple wife. One of the wives, she wants her son to be the next Pharaoh. You know, his name is Ben Tower. Uh, you know, the Pharaoh refused that because who's supposed to be the next Pharaoh? The oldest son of the royal, you know, from the royal wife. That's why the Pharaoh refused. That's why they got an idea to assassinate the Pharaoh. That's why Ramses III has been assassinated by cut in his throat. By the way, uh, his mommy is in uh, so the museum of the National Civilization Museum. Even they show you by the x-ray, the cut, it's so deep. That's why doctors, they said already that we, we are sure the person comes from behind and the, the knife was extremely sharp. Why? Ramses II is a great warrior. That's why his enemies, they cannot facing him. That's why they're sure the person come from behind and he makes sure the knife will be extremely sharp, very sharp, because that one time to be fair enough, you know? Um, that's why he's being assassinated. That's why you will see that by the X-ray. Also, you will see they put the symbol of the Eye of Horus after they done a mummification and wrapped his neck with linen, the priestess they put the symbol of the eye of the god Horus over this why? This symbol of protection, protect from evil eye, and even symbol of healing to make the healing of this part, you know, for his journey in the afterlife. That's why you would watch that in the, you know, the um, National Civilization Museum. Uh, that's you know about it, is, but he's considered like one of the best great warriors as well. In ancient time, as we will see the battle here, and we will talk about what happened in those battles as well. But okay, the facade here is different than any temple because the temple started by something we call it a pylon. So, pylon, just like the entrance of the facade of the temple from the beginning, you know, it takes like a shape of a word and hieroglyphics called Akhit means the horizon okay but here is the beginning they take this actually that's a, like affections in the art form like syria like hittites location of syria nowadays and even like the old cities in palestine for like make the beginning of the temple seems like a fortress okay why do you see the so the, uh, this like the windows where the Pharaoh used to stand over there to watch people coming to visit his temple. Okay? Why is that we can, uh, uh, so guys, again, we 
some hieroglyphics here together, so I'm going to mark with my laser on the, so on the hieroglyphics, then we can, you can, you know, it's called Nisu Piti. You see, that's, uh, and that's like a bee, like a bee, the honey bee. So, so Nisu Piti, Nisu Piti, it means Firu of upper and lower. And here, the name of Ramses will be Wisr Ma'at, goddess Ma'at, M-A-T-A-T, goddess of justice, Wisr Ma'at Ra. So, the strong justice of Ra. That's Mary. Miri means lovable or who loved who's who loved and here e men e men is the god amun ra so wesser maat ra you know Mary e men here this sa sa it means like son sa sa ra son of the god ra i mean the son of the god neb khau so neb it means like ma the master khau it means rises the master of the rises okay and here the other name is Ra, the god Ra, Ra Mesu. Ra Mesu means who's born by Ra. Like Mes, it means born or like a baby. And that's Heka, Heka, it's symbol of power. I mean the ruler of Awin, which is already like so, a part of like, that's a, the, um, the location or the uh, state, which is a, a part, Luxor is a part of that state. Here, D, that's D. Verb means to give. Verb to give. D, that seems like a pyramid shape. D, Ank. Ank, it means life. Then, that's Jet, stability. Was, power. This, me, me, it means as. Okay? And here, Ra is the god Ra. So, I mean, give life, stability, power as the god Ra for who? For Ramses the third himself then here the snake is j that's t jet jet it means eternity but for timing okay like a land like sorry for the place eternal place like you see like a land here neha it means eternity but for timing okay to the right and left hand side here you see a, an image of goddess her name is so sekhmet sekhmet is the goddess of war and healing okay that's two those are already uh, war, healing, destroying, you know. Why they choose a female in Bagan's fort? But you know, that belongs to the temple here? No, that came from the temple of Amen Hotep III. While it's been destroyed. So, guys, you can be in the shade here. I know it's hot, so. Going through. Keep going. Yeah. So you can. By the way, do you know why they choose the female line of the goddess of war and healing? Uh, by the way, uh, if the female line going to hunt went out to hunt five times, went four times and fell in one, only one time. But do you know the male line is gonna hunt five times, fell four times and just went one time. That's why really ancient Egyptians and they watch a nature, they find male line. I know most of cultures is male line, king, strong, powerful, but you have to know male line. Mostly just lazy waiting for the food and the female, yeah, protecting. And the female line, the hunter, that's why you choose the female line to be goddess of war and destroying and healing. Uh, by the way, the first scene you could see it for the sea people it's from the beginning here, you know, you remember what I was explaining yesterday? The biggest scene will be the God himself. The God Amun Ra is the man with the two fathers over the head. This is Amun Ra, the king of the God. Then in front of him, Ramses the third. Why is he holding, you know, the rule? Fighting all of the enemies to offer them to the god Amun Ra, while you see the silence from the neck, and they hold, they fight, the arm is from behind. You know, not so long ago, policemen used to fight from the front, and then they find out there's not a very good control. Then they said it's better to fight from the back, 
already they know that back in the time, it's better to tie the arms from behind, not from the front. Over here, you see the line of the pharaoh. He has a pet, yeah, but his pet is a line. Look at the head, you see the guys? Like his, his now the pharaoh is holding the enemies from the hair. But you look at that st different style of the hair, this is the Libyan people, this is from Libya. Okay, different than the sea people here. This is a different of the sea. Okay, so here they catch them from the hair and is ready to smash them, you know. And you see as well who's helping the pharaoh during the fight, his line. You see the head, the ears, the legs, and here the tail of the line, okay. Because even there is one of the stories, Ostraka, that been found by one of the enemies. Uh, during the time of Ramses from the Hittites or the like location of Syria, he was, say, he was saying like how they escape from right in front of Ramses III because they find that Pharaoh coming with like two lines next, walking next to him. That's why they said how we could fight a person has pets as a line. I think like seemed like no way to do this. So, uh, over here, to your left hand side, that's called, you know, the, uh, we call them like the rest house or the holy boat or the holy part of the, of the, you know, used to carry the image of the God. Because already during the festival, we have to put the image of the God, I mean the statue inside the shrine, then put that shrine over a holy boat or we call the holy part. Then the priest is used to go through the temple carrying this. For sure, they need a rest. They're not gonna rest it on the ground, but they make a special place for resting even not under the sun. That's why they make the, so the rest places here. We're ready for the three, you know, main gods of the temple here. Amon Ra, his wife, Mut, then them son, Khonso. Uh, so the temple consisted of, like, we gave the, an idea about the temple itself. It consisted of like the outer, you know, courtyard. This is for commoners. Commoners, you cannot step into the temple. Then the pylon, it takes the shape of Akhet, the horizon. Who can pass this? Like, like nobles, you know, nobles, rich people, they can step inside. After that, you got an open courtyard, this for the nobles. Uh, then later on, you find another hall, we call it a hypostyle hall. Hypostyle hall, hall with columns to carry ceiling. That's for priests. Because priests, they don't have to see the sky. Why? How you could be a priest in ancient time? At least you have to have a part of royal blood. And once you have a royal blood, you are related to the Pharaoh. It means you are related to the God. I mean, you don't have to see the sky because you have a connection in your blood. But you know, locals, even you know, the rich people, some of the novels, they don't have that. That's why they have to see the sky. That's why they are in an open core yard. Tarek, can we uh, just have a look at the mud bricks over there? Your first example, they're ancient ones. You'll see a lot of them restored, but look how thick they are. The whole temple, all the way around, have a look, surrounded by the yeah. mud brick walls. Because already, that's how they end up the temple. After they build the whole temple, they surround the whole temple with a huge wall made out of mud. To be like the guard in the temple and even like represented like seeing the universe. By the way, now quick thing, we're gonna do it quickly because we're not gonna see any palaces all over Egypt except right here. I'm gonna do it so quick. I'm gonna show you how the palace look like. Then we get back to the temple, okay? For sure, the palace used to be in the East Bank, but already the Pharaoh used to come here doing the celebration in his mortuary temple. So, make celebration for, you know, his victories. As you see, you know, over here, you know, to uh, right and left hand side, the god Amun-Ra, you know, and the Pharaoh here. In the, with the upper Egypt crown, you remember? So, Dr. Gary, when he show you the difference between the crowns, guys, here is the upper crown, I mean, south crown. Over there will be with a lower crown, north crown. To be the people say, our, the Pharaoh has the double crowns. He rules Egypt upper and lower. That's why, and you see how like, it starts like tightening 
the enemies and write down the names of the cities you know is already like during his fight you know and you would see even as we mentioned uh, there is a difference for the scenes here you see the african face you know here you see the beard you know the tills they are you know the uh, you know asian people you know he tides Retiti, the different shape of the headdress, you know, you see people, so the one with the hair style, that would be the Libyan, that's from Libya. Uh, so please come closer here, quickly, uh, it's gonna be the ruins of the Temple of Ramses III. So the palace, the ruins of the palace has been recently been found, that when he come to visit, you know, his temple here, he used to come here, he stays in this palace. That's why this is the only place you are able to see ruins of an ancient palace back to the time of the pharaohs. Because you remember, most limb is made out of mud and mud is not going to last for that long. By the way, here there's also a master scene while you see Ramses III, you know, in his chariot. In his chariot, but he's not fighting here. He went through fighting like a hunting trap like high hunting trap that's why i see while you know already you know you see like the best representation for uh, like the uh you know the lower egypt or the nile delta you see the so hunting oxes while this one turned upside down and you see the arrows it comes in you know you see there is another ox here you see the horn you know so to say you see even fishes, you know. And here, who is here? This is the sons of Ramses II. The one holding the bow and the arrows, the sons of Ramses the third, Ramses the third. And here, those are the guards. They are coming to guarding, you know, the princess during, you know, the prince of the sons of Ramses the third during the hunting trip. Okay, but the rest of the palace is already mud. And mud is not gonna last for that long. You know, that's why this is where the person, you know, you see the stairs, the stairs, the stairs from the three side, and those like some of the titans of Ramses the third and so the bathroom is down there. This is the, like the men bathroom. There's another one over there would be the women's bathroom. So this like where the throne of the queen you need to come out. So right now we're gonna see like the punishment, you know, during the fight of uh, the soldiers of Ramses II. And um, we're like starting by something, you know, you're not gonna see it a lot. Guys, come, you see this, like the head of the back here. You go up a little bit, you see what is that soldier doing for the Libyans, cutting his finger. <laughs> so he cut his finger, right? <laughs> by the way, Okay, they killed some people, but they never kill all of them. There is some people, they already did something. We will see here, cutting fingers, later cutting the hands, later on cutting something else, but we will talk about it. But the idea is, here cutting the fingers, why? You are not able to use the arrows again. Yeah. And I think that happens between, you know, France and England, yeah. where they were cutting, you know, the fingers. Then the English, they beat the French and they did yeah yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> so they do this and this is from where how they got that you know sign from yeah because that go we beat you we are the winner you know <laughs> even while you cut the you know it's cutting the fingers that's why you see that here it's like you know where they begin like cutting the fingers but later on we're gonna see like cutting the hands that's why they got an idea doing this i mean like some people when they see the scenes of cutting the are the, the the you know the hands and the fingers they said oh that's uh, egyptians were like that's aggressive but not about aggressive it's just they want to make something you know so, yeah. yeah like fear to fear like the country okay this is what gonna happen for you if you think to come attack in the country that's why you know this you know, like one of like the beginning of the scenes and why they see that the chariots and the Firu, for sure, Firu, the chariot of the Firu will be the biggest one. Because as we said, the size depends on, you know, 
he's he's the son of the god that's why it has to be much bigger than anybody else then the scene that comes to get smaller to like okay novels and smaller to like you know workers but the god still bigger than the pharaoh himself you know because he's just the son of the god that's why you watch that even on the scenes there ramses the third when he starts to leading the enemies and over there you see all of the different type of enemies started by the sea people you know see them at the top you know then you see a different like you know some you know but you know, we are all of them to go and lead them to give them as offering for, you know, the god Amon Ra and behind him, his beautiful wife, goddess Mood, so down there. Actually, do you know what they are doing? Message for the horse of the field. So guys, if you come over here, you could see that. Like go and do a massage for the legs of the horse. Why, do you know? The horse of Ramses the third is fighting as well during the fight of Ramses the third. He's like used to power push the enemies. That's why, like after done the fight, so the servants comes even making some massage for the body of the horse himself. If you come and look at the top, you see the cross. Look at right in front of the God Amun Ra. You see the cross, the Christian cross. Why? By the way, that temple also, because as I said, Egyptians have been Christian during the Roman time. Roman, they are the leader of Christianity nowadays, at the beginning not so much. That's why Roman, if they find someone not believe in them, kill them. That's why Romans, they started a big persecution against Christianity at the beginning, until Christianity became the main religion for the Roman Empire. And, you know, that's why, you know, people used to hide themselves because you cannot tell you are Christian back in the time. That's why you used to hide themselves in old tombs and temples. That's why, but here in this temple, it turned it into a church. So statues of Ramses the third is in, uh, so the Osiris style. We call it the semi-Osiris statue to show the combination between the Pharaoh and the god Osiris, god of the afterlife, paradise, god of death. But, and even, you know, we're gonna see even the mixture later during the Ptolemy time, but, uh, you know, uh, so the columns that contains the two symbols of upper and lower Egypt, papyrus and lotus flower. And the style itself represented upper, so the papyrus, style like an open style like the flower of the papyrus plant okay and you know you get like you know the scenes like it seems like you know ancient egyptian they believe the base of the column it seems like the internal water then comes out of it the plants and the papyrus and lotus flower then rise up of this the for two sheer of the Firu, which has been surrounded by the two goddesses of upper and lower. Then here there comes the scenes of the Firu, who start like show you the relationship between the god and the Firu and how it starts to serve so the god supporting him by give him the knife to beat the enemies. I mean sign like, okay, I'm supporting you for your fight to beat the enemies, to protect the country, you know. Then, you know, you start to see the titles of the Pharaoh, the cartouches of the Pharaoh, while it's been ended by, again, the temple of upper and lower Egypt. You see that style of the headdress? That's sea people. You're not gonna find this anywhere else except like, you know, the sea. You can see the lights. You know, ma'am? Oh, yes. Are those the sea people? Guys, here, you see this kind of headdress, you know, it's not, it's not an Egyptian, and this is like the sea people, we said that Libyans, they have a style of the hair, you know, Nubians, you see the African, you know, features, um, you know, so he tights, beards, and Asian features, you know, that's why you see, uh, it's uh, the difference between the, the different kinds of the enemies. But here is the sea people, I mean, like so Palestine. The sea used to be lower. That's why? To creating a pyramid of the temple. Why? The smallest part at the end, 
It is the most holy part of the temple. The whole temple is made to that small tiny room known as the Holy of the Holies, which used to contain the image of the God. Same thing, guys. You see the hinge of the door. It used to be a wooden, like a big huge door made out of the, the sea dog wood that came from the ancient of Lebanon. Uh, by the way, um, you see here a be very beautiful colors, and now they're still working on the restoration, removing the layers of the dust and you know the mud from the top of uh, you know from the you know from uh, you know from top of the scene to show off the original colors. You know through the temple, goddess Nefet, goddess of Upper Egypt. Uh, but do you know why this uh, ceiling, the most of the ceiling, you see the beautiful color still exist? Because that here used to be a church, it used to cover the scenes. That's why they put like a layer to cover the scenes. That's why that cover preserved the colors. That's why, you know, that color, so, you know, layers, it's preserved the colors. That's why, you know, it's uh, amazing, one of the amazing things to see the beautiful colors, which is made out of, as we said, natural, you know, uh, stones and natural minerals. We started making, you know, the... I think anyway, uh, I did skip it. It's right here, you know, outside. If anyone want to see it, uh, we said they cut the fingers, they cut the arms. If someone want to see that, I will show you. Later on, they cut the penis. So uh, why they cut the penis for who? For the dead people. Because already they're dead. But the one they cut the arms and the fingers, they still alive. When they go back, but for like a punishment for even dead people like if someone comes and see oh it's their person but his penis has been cut off that's why it also it's like gives the fear for you know the men go fight that's why that's if you if anybody want to see the scenes i can show you Tarek, that was also to prove that they only were killing males because with the hands they could not yes. tell right yes so the uh, king said, you only got to kill males, because, not women and children. Yeah, so. because already, uh, by the way, they were fighting, but you know, and they have rules for the fight. Don't cut a tree. Don't make any pollution, like in rivers or any, like you, you are not allowed to do this. You are not allowed to kill women. You are not allowed to kill children. You are not allowed to kill old people. That's why they were fighting, but they have rules for the fight that's why when they was cutting hands if you come and see hands so you cannot make sure they're actually male that's why you got an idea that cutting the penis as well that we, i think that makes sense it's got just a male guys uh, come here it's amazing thing and it will make sense for you for something so come to the shade over here and enjoy that uh, important scene um, So, uh, guys, come closer. I'm over here. I'm gonna show you something quickly amazing and um, you're not gonna see it anywhere else as well um, here we could see that the scene of the Firu okay but if you look at his cloth you see those holes that used to be semi precious stones being inlaid into the onto the stone but the robbers they take it off that's why here and on the other side, like behind Mr. Gary there, here, you see that used to be inlaid by semi-precious stones and being stolen by the robbers. But here we could see who? 
the sons of Ramses the third, so twenty dynasty. Okay, his sons. But let's see over here the deepest carving you see in all over Egypt, guys. Look how deep that is. Look at those cartouches and see how that deep is. You know, you could put your whole hand in there. Why? Because already Ramses the third he learned it from the idea before there is like Ramses the second used to chisel names, put his name on. That's why he decided to make his cartouche as deep as he could because like seems like no way to remove this, put your name on because if you will try to destroy this, you will destroy the whole cartouche. That's why I know it's like he made like a good an idea, try to make the deepest carving even for the jet, the eternity. You know, they make it so deep, you know, there's the deepest carving, try to keep this intact, you know, for himself and tells this is belongs to me. But here you see the sons of Ramses the third. Okay, we said that when his dynasty famous by Ramses, started by Ramses III, and unless Ramses number 11. But there is some of them is already sons of Ramses the third himself. But who could tell who is Pharaoh and who wasn't a Pharaoh? Okay, this guy here, oh, he put his name into a cartouche. Cartouche is just for the Pharaoh himself. That tells that prince, so prince, later on, he became a Pharaoh. And who he is? Ramses IV. Okay? This one as well, he put his name into a cartouche. That tells his, he was, later on, he became a Pharaoh. That's why he comes here to put his name into a cartouche. Because already the titles and the names wasn't into cartouche, but when he became a Pharaoh, he's allowed to put his name into a cartouche. So, Ramses IV. Ramses VI. Okay? So, Ramses IV. Ramses VI. So, six. This also is, I put his name into a cartouche. Ramses number eight. Uh, here, he didn't put his name into cartouche. So this prince never been in power. There's never been in power. There's never been in power. So all of them, they cannot put their names into cartouches. It is only those ones they became in a power later. You know, that's why they allowed to put their names into the cartouches. And who is here? Ramses the second. How we know? His cartouches is over here, whistle, mind, ra, sit, and ra. Okay? And ra, mesu, miri, even. So there's the both names of Ramses the second. Both names, yes. Every hero has two names, birth name, coronation name, birth name, you know, uh, the same as the pop. But the difference is they're using both of them. Okay? And here you find a scene for Alan Men, anywhere you would explain about Alan, Alan Men more in the environment of looks of Jennifer. Okay? And here this is the holy booth, or the holy part that we said used to have hold in the shrine. Inside it used to be the statue of the god, you know, or the whole the whole statue put inside the shrine and put over the holy part. Please just be carried around. No, this Ramses, uh, this is, no, this Ramses uh, three. Yeah. And how he knows? That's how the he knows? That's the three. Yeah. How he knows already the Ramses the second doesn't have the uh, name of him and his birth name. But here, even the head card, that's the Ramses the second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This the first name. Look at the first name here. Who will be the strong justice of Ra, who choosing from the god Ra is Ramses the second. Okay, there's a difference. If you take the cartouches and you look, the difference between both of them, even here, is so deep. It tells Ramses the third. It here is not that deep because there's the name of Ramses the second here. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Appropriate thing to mention in Egypt, the arm has nothing to do with the cross. With the cross. cross. <laughs> yeah. Nothing whatsoever. But you know, in the early times, sometimes they use the symbol of the, of the arm to be this, like a symbol of the cross, but it isn't anyway. It's just not a cross. Seems like a cross, but it's not a cross. It's not it's not the one Ramses the third, his cartouches. 
Ah, this is a symbol called cartouche. Yeah, cartouche, this is the seal of the Thiru. Yeah. Okay. And where's the three, which is the part that says... Already, already, no, we call him three because he's called himself. That's what we call him. And, ah. and ah. we start to name them to make the different easy ah. for, for you oh, to understand. Because oh, his name is Ramses. Ah. Ramses the first, his name is Ramses. Ramses the second, his name is Ramses. You know, because Ra Mesu, Ramses. Okay. And the third, and the fourth, added, the sixth, the seventh, there is 11 no Ramses. That's why, you know, like, it's hard for you to, like, literally read the hieroglyphics. That's why easier to tell you Ramses, first, second, third, to understand. It's not one thing in, 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 in